Today's TGI starts with a whimper and a fizz. If only I had some friends. <laughs> hey! Hi, Alex. Right. Good to see you, Hal. All right. <laughs> hey, Zoe. Hey, Mary. This hey, calls yeah. for a celebration. <laughs> hey, Simon. <laughs> Watch out. Careful Here she now. comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, oh. Whoa. Whoa. Is that posh stuff? This is the very best. It looks like Lidl's to me. Because, <laughs> because I thought I was having a little party on my own, and I thought, how can this be improved upon? <laughs> and you did it perfectly. That's all right. So I'm going to raise a toast to you and our dear viewers. Mama. One more. Oh, okay. There we are. Wow. These are amazing glasses. Aren't they beautiful? Specsavers. <laughs> I was going to say. Cheers. Right, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Simon. And welcome to this episode of TGI Monday, dear viewer. I hope you're raising a glass at home. <laughs> this mm. episode it links in to the bubbles and the cake and the friends because Sarah asked us this great question on YouTube, which is, why is the church important? I've obviously got my ideas prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to go first? I'm sorry, I've got my mouth too full of cake. Mm. Uh, uh, no, I think, I think the church is important for many, many reasons, but this is a very important one of them, isn't it? You know, fellowship, you know, to come together, but also not just for fun and, and, uh, and bubbles, uh, but also like in times of difficulty, where do you go? Who do you ask for a really good, a uh, helpful answer. Well, I know that I've got plenty of friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> not him. He's doing the good <laughs> in church, who I trust to have a good uh, way of thinking through answers, um, and are going to think in a similar way that I would want them to, as in that I would want to. Mm. Yeah, we need friends, don't well, we? I think it's to do with being human as well. Like, I brought in this picture, um, which is from Sacramento Roma, which is, uh, like, this church around the corner from um, the Colosseum in Rome. Mm -hmm. And it's got, uh, it's got, if you see there, they've got the vine, and Christ, his cross, is planted in the vine. Okay. And the vine grows up. Oh, yeah. Around that, that. And it fills the whole roof of the church, this does. Yeah. And I think the thing is with it is... In our society, we're totally atomized. In other words, we're all sort of alone in our little boxes. And we, we, we're told that we are like lonely robots <laughs> that sort of blunder around with no real connection with any other human being. And I think that's completely false. We're being created to be in community. And our survival strategy as human beings is that we we form communities. Oh, yeah. And I think that uh, the church is vital because it's only within a community I can be fully who I am. Mm. It's only within my family that I can be me. I can't be authentically me alone, mm. which mm. is the, the fundamental lie of our society. Which is, which is why the problem with the church sometimes is we just think about a service. Yeah, and actually, right. I mean, our vicar often says, you know, stay for coffee. That's an important part of our time together because that's, mm. in theory, yeah. where we can open up and relate to each other and process. Holy well, moly, I mean, Simon, you're here too. Get your glass. <laughs> he's, got, he's, got he's got one, he's got one. He's got one. He's got one. He's got one. But that's the thing at the start, isn't it? So we started talking about church, but we've not explained what church is. Mm. And I think it's very easy to think that it's where we are. You know, it's this oh, amazing building. building yeah. But nothing at all to do. Church is the ecclesia. Uh, people, the, the, the people of God, you mm. know, the gathering, as it were. Yeah. And um, so when we are gathered, we are church, we are together. And obviously we know that if two or three are gathered in my name, uh, Jesus says, then I am with you. So the church is a place where we can definitely be who we are, mm. more yeah. of who we are, but also we can meet with, with Jesus, that we can be in his company. Absolutely. And it's... And it's 
what we do on a Monday is uh, at least as, if not more than, more important than what we do on a Sunday, because for all of those reasons that we've just heard, but also what, what the church is there to do. It's not there for its own self. It's there to, to help reveal what God's like. So no matter what governments come and go, what matter, no matter what part of the world throughout history, uh, God has always been a God of compassion, uh, bringing the excluded people into community, bringing people who are struggling and kind of the ones that, you know, might just get swept away by powerful society. Jesus again and again said, no, that is not what God's like. Throughout the Old Testament stories, look after the widows, look after the, those, uh, look after immigrants and refugees, look after each other, and not just the people who seem to matter by society's register. It, so we do that together because that's what God is like mm. and that's who we're supposed to be. But in, yeah, revealing. that's right. But I think in, in, the, in the monastery, we used to have this thing called um, the two tables, the table of the Eucharist and the table of the community. Mm-hmm. And I think that we often think about church as just the, the table as far as like the altar or the church in which we go to, the building and the service. But what he's saying is, is our worship inspires and allows us to be uh, a fully human community. And the community that serves uh, those around us is, is what the whole point of it's for. Mm-hmm. So, you know, celebra- being fed spiritually uh, at communion and through the word enables and inspires us to feed physically the world around us. And, and that's what, what, what the church has always attempted to do. Mm-hmm. That's anyway. why the, the Roman Catholics call it mass, because it comes from the word misse, That's right. which is the latter part of dismissal. So you come together as a community, you're fed at the Lord's table, and then you're dismissed, sent you out go. into the world. The yeah. most important part of the Mass is the Mass is ended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Mm. So it's the sending out that's the most important part of the Mass, Father Luke Small told me. And I think that, that as, a, as a group together of Christians, if we look at the, you know, the idea that we are the body of Christ, that mm. we find all over the New Testament, you know, that we are the body, it is a, a wonderfully inspiring community document, actually. Mm. This idea that everybody has a different role to play, that everybody is significant and that everybody is important. The church can be a real blueprint for saying that everybody in society is worthy. Mm. You know, and I think often in today's uh, society, we can think that there are people who are of worth, there are people who are of less worth. Definitely. And you definitely hear um, in uh, media all the time about people who are scroungers or people who are layabouts or people who are this or that or the other. No, mm. every single person has a role to play and a part well, in But the other community. thing is as well, is with, with the community, is it can go wrong. And that's a very important part of, uh, of church, is the fact mm. that we... It, it Learning to live wrong. with difference. Yeah, mm. well, look, that's Just right. like a family. That's you, right. You have yeah. your squabbles. Yeah. But you stay that's together. Right. But it's through the differences, through rubbing along in the community, that we actually discover God. And mm-hmm. we this pressure we have in society now to always be perfect. Right? <laughs> and the great thing about the church is we admit we're not perfect. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's wonderful. Is it's the place that we can go where we can feel uncomfortable because <laughs> we well, it's no, mostly it's, the seating. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's good to be uncomfortable because we can know who we truly are. Well, it's humbling it's as well. It's real, isn't it? Because yeah. every generation has decided that they know the gospel according to to me, <laughs> and actually yeah. we have to be aware that we're all a bit wrong, and so that our history and what's been learned is as important as insight about what we have now. Well, actually. The Gospel according to Zoe leads me on to the Gospel according to Matthew, uh, verse, no, chapter 18, verse 20, as you alluded to earlier. It says, where two or three, and this is Jesus' words, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So, Sarah, thank you very much for that great question. And everybody, thank you for watching. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Quite good. A whimper and a fizz. Yeah. If I said that, it would come across as an innuendo. Thanks for joining the party. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share in all the usual places. Yeah.